that moment when you are recording and it just stops. Oh, well. We're starting again. So, sorry, I'm, I'm really tired. It's like midnight. Um, just finished working. I want to go ahead and go over real quick the question I've gotten asked the most over the last several months, and that's basically what should I get for home defense? So what should I get for my first gun? You know, um, focusing on home defense. Okay, so I'm going to run you through what I think the ideal situation is with for most people because not all of us have, you know, $1,000 a week to spend on ammo, okay? So here's what I would recommend, just straightforward, and we can always talk more fun stuff down the road. But what I would do, I would get a 10.5 inch 5.56 with like a 1.7 twist, okay? Um, and I would make sure my lower is a multi-lower, uh, which is pretty much all of them these days, it seems like, at least from what I've seen. Um, but I would make sure. And then um, I would not go shorter than 10 and a half inches because anything under 10 and a half inches with 5.56 just isn't um, getting really the muzzle velocity that you would like to have even at close range um, to make sure that the um, 5.56 round is actually doing what it should do. God forbid you have to use it in a home defense situation. Okay, um, so from there, uh, oh, and the reason I like the shorter barrels, um, I would do an AR pistol, by the way, not a rifle stock because if you go rifle stock legally you're required to do a 200 dollars tax stamp process it takes six to 12 plus months months for you to actually get your weapon back okay um you don't get to have it during that time you know this is beautiful example of our government screwing around with stuff that they shouldn't screw around with and they are freaking infringing to the 10th power it's ridiculous um, that being said, without getting into all that right now, the whole point is, um, the shorter barrel length allows you to be able to maneuver inside a lot quicker, and it also cuts off some weight, so you're able to go ahead and have more speed, and you keep in mind, most of our homes, if we are, God forbid, ever in a situation where we have to, um, shoot an intruder, that's probably going to be from only a few yards, maybe five yards, ten yards out, um, maybe if your hallway is decently long, you might have a 20 yard hallway, but probably not. So, um, for most of us, so once again, God forbid anything like that ever happened. The whole point is I want every little bit of advantages I can get. So I like, I, I have a 10 and a half inch five, five, six, um, is what I did for my first home defense gun. And, uh, the, uh, um, next thing after you get that would be to go ahead and get a really good light. Um, I would recommend a pretty bright light, um, something like 600 lumens or stronger with a pressure pad and a strobe feature, okay? The pressure pad's great because then if you have to move um, for some reason, you most of these things happen at nighttime a lot of the time, believe it or not. I, mean, I, think, I think most of us know this. So if you wake up to it and, you know, now you've got your your gun, if you don't have the ability to see what you're checking out, you know, then... That could be a big problem. You could accidentally um, uh, fire around at someone that you shouldn't be firing around at. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, going back to it, the flashlight is very important. You need to be able to see and identify your target um, and, and, and know that that's what you want to be shooting. Okay, um, next thing after that would be a good quality um, holographic sight or red dot sight. Um, whatever you do, you need to be able to train to have both eyes open. Um, the last thing I want to be doing is having tunnel vision, looking down, trying to focus through this one little area, um, on what's going on when I could have so much more awareness with my peripheral vision. So I trained very specific, you know, like um, good shooters, um, that I've learned from, they do the same. You're keeping your both eyes open. Um, there's lots of tips and stuff for how to be able to get better at that. But that's why I like the holographic site. I find that I do really well with that, with both eyes open, with the holographic. Um, I can do it with a red dot, but I'm better with holographic, so have the best I can. So I run an EOTech with that. Um, and then uh, after that, um, I also picked up for my AR pistol, this 10 and a half inch. I, uh, got, I have an AFG, an angled foregrip um, by Magpul. I like theirs. It's nice gives me ability to control. I mean, there's not a ton of recoil to worry about, but there's, you know, recoil. So I, I like it. I can go ahead and have a more stable platform. <clears throat> and then um, you're not allowed to use a full vertical grip, by the way, with an AR pistol um, currently with ATF. You're not allowed to do that. That would be illegal. 
Um, so you have to be careful um, with what you get, but AFGs are allowed. So that's cool. Um, and then aside from that, I'm trying to think what else on those. Um, nothing else specific. I keep a tourniquet on mine, um, typically. Uh, not all of my guns. I, I don't actually have one on this one right now, but... Um, because of the pistol brace, I, I usually have the ones that have a rifle stock. I usually have a tourniquet on that, but um, this one I actually don't. Um, but I do have um, tourniquet and um, a trauma kit in my EDC bag, which is always right there, you know, within like 10 feet of me. Um, so that's nearby. Um, moving on, uh, that's everything for that gun. And what I would say is, is, is let's keep in mind the whole point I started out with about ammo and ammo cost. The reason being, I'm pointing that out, the first thing is 5.56 is because my ultimate is 300 blackout, but 300 blackout is going to run you well, before all the craziness happens, 75 cents a round. So I shoot 300 rounds a week minimum, okay? So if I'm shooting 300 blackout, that's $225 a week. But if I'm shooting 5.56, that's $90 a week, but that's still a lot of money. So what's the next step? How do I cut that down? You know, 225 is a crap ton. $90 is still, to me, a crap ton of money to be spending every week on ammo um, currently. But that being said, I can do better. So let me get the CMMG conversion kit, 22 long rifle, okay? Go ahead and pick that up. It cost you about $200, give or take. I was able to get mine, I think, on sale for like $165, $170. And then you're able to shoot 22 long rifle. Well, right now you can get 22 long rifle for about four-ish cents around, give or take, depending on where you get it, when you get it. Um, there's a big jump there. So we went from 75 cents around to 30 cents to four cents, okay? Um, now we're looking at 300 rounds being, what, $12. Um, now I do have a little rule of thumb. I do finish after I've shot those. I do shoot at least five rounds, so $1.50 of uh 556 just because it helps clean out the 22 long rifle bulk stuff is really dirty ammo so helps keep the barrel from uh having too much going on inside of it clean, you know clears it out a little bit um and obviously you got to clean it more often shooting 22 long rifle but that's fine um doesn't really cost any extra money to be doing cleaning and stuff uh so that being said that is a huge 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 deal to me to be able to go ahead and shoot that much and uh you know, really not pay a whole lot of money um, for it. So once again, we make those jumps, right? Now we've got the CMMG conversion kit. We're shooting, training regularly because that's the big deal is, you know, it's great to have this stuff, but if you don't know how to get it and and, and let's say you have a, a malfunction, something, you know, if you're not if you're not trained well, you could induce the malfunction very easily. Um, but then if you train well and, and it just happens to malfunction, you should still be able to go ahead and clear that very quickly and it should be second nature. You, God forbid you're ever in a situation or I'm ever in a situation, but the last thing I want to be doing is trying to remember how do I fix this? You know, oh no, what's wrong with my gun? You know, that should all be second nature. Um, I want to be able to focus on whatever is going on, the situation, because I'm about to make a very important decision potentially. I'm about to decide whether or not to allow a round or more to leave the chamber. And every single one that leaves, I am going to be held responsible for those. Um, so I don't want to screw that up. And the last thing I want to be doing is fo having my, my focus pulled from potentially with that decision, what's going to happen. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to train and train hard and train a lot and take it seriously. Um, and that, I also enjoy it. So, I mean, no. oh, man, I got to go shoot. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. So, uh, that being said, um, something after that, no, I would also recommend a, a shot timer. Um, and if you're going to be at a range indoors with other people, I would recommend getting the, uh, man, I forgot the name of it. I think it's like an Alpha Max. It's a watch. I think it's the Alpha Max 2 is what they call it. But it's got an accelerometer in it as well as the timer, um, uh, as well as the audio um, the timer. And the accelerometer works. I find it works about 90, 95% of the time really well with counting shots accurately and everything, getting the right shots, um, the amounts and everything correct. Um, even when I'm in a range um, recently with up to 
16 lanes and basically all of them full of people shooting around me and I'm still getting my stuff just fine. So I think that that's worth it. It's not cheap, but, um, you know, it's good to be able to know if I'm getting better and what I'm doing and, and looking at my times versus other people that I respect. Um, so, you know, like for me, I can go, um, little things that I didn't know, you know, like knowing that my low, you know, from a low ready, you know, the goal at five yards, low ready, getting up on a target this few inches is to be able to go ahead and do this from the beep, which I have set for random times and stuff so that I'm not knowing, I don't want to get into a, uh, a groove without realizing it, um, because it's always a certain amount of time. Um, I think, uh, one of the guys I follow, Luke, Lucas Botkin with T-Rex Arms, who I respect a ton as well as, um, I mean, there's quite a few amazing guys out there. Warrior Poets Society with John Lovell and their team. They're amazing. But uh, Luke, Lucas is really, really, really good. Um, and he's got a standard. I think it's five yards under half a second from low ready um, for one shot on target. That's pretty good. And I think he consistently can pull a point four um, for him. Now, for me, consistently, when I started, I was like point eight something. You know, um, my consistency, I think it's down around 0.6 now currently. My my fastest, I've had some where I've done, um, I think um, I think my fastest is like 0.46. But um, I've had several where I've gotten right around 0.5, give or take a little bit. But I'm not consistent there yet. But I'm working towards it. You know, when I started, I was up there around 0.8-ish. And now I'm getting closer to the 0.6 mark. Um, I'm in the 0.6s and... Uh, you know, that's an improvement. It's a good improvement. And I need to continue to work on it and train and get better and faster. Um, so all of that to say, you know, like, I think that is where the timer does come in nice um, around the same time as getting that 22 conversion kit. I think you get that first and then you get the timer after that. Um, and then after that, I would recommend going with 300 blackout. Um, 300 blackout, you can go six and a half to 10 and a half inch barrel. I wouldn't recommend going longer than 10 and a half because, you know, once again, I just, I just don't see the point um, of getting longer barrels, um, for, for a close quarter situation. Um, I think that for me, my favorite, um, for 300 blackout, I guess it depends on the person. For me, I, mine is 10 and a half inches. Okay. Um, I've got that on the way now cause I hadn't gotten 10 and a half. I hadn't done 300 blackout yet cause I've put all the time and money into these other things. Um, and, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be fun. But um, I wanted to go, I really wanted to go with eight and a half inches. And uh, because of the fact that they just are sold out of so many things recently, I uh, decided, you know what, I will go ahead and go with 10 and a half. The advantage of 10 and a half, I did decide to, for me, is because I'm already so used to training so much with 10 and a half um, that I, at least I'll still have the same, I'll still have the same barrel length. Um, so there's some advantages there. The biggest deal for me is being here in Virginia, some of the stuff they're changing, all these laws and crazy stuff, special meetings now coming up that are off cycle for them. Um, it's just insane. Now that they got like a super majority and stuff, it's insane. So I was like, you know what? I don't want to wait. I'm going to go and just do it and get it. So I got 10 and a half inch on the way for, for that. Um, and you can just get the upper. You don't need to get a, uh, another full on, um, AR pistol for that. You can just get a 10 and a half inch 300 blackout upper or shorter, you know, you can go down, like I said, go down to six and a half if you want, seven and a half. Um, I like to be able to, the way that I run and run and gun is I do like to have a little bit, a little bit longer out to be able to pull back in. I don't like to be too, too up and close, but at the same time, um, I don't want to be too far because once again, close quarters. So it just depends. I haven't done uh, much with stuff shorter than 10 and a half um, yet, but I'm sure once I do, I'll be like hooked on that too. <laughs> so see what happens. Um, got some friends who've got some that are down six and a half inches. They really love them. Um, let's see. So the 300 blackout, I think that that's great. I would not go subsonic unless you got a can on it. Um, if you're going to do all that, uh, which obviously you'd have to go through $200 tech stamp, do all that stuff again, wait a year, <laughs> um, to be able to get your silencer six months, a year plus. Um, so I would go uh, with the supersonic stuff um, for that personally, uh, 300 blackout. Um, 300 blackout, I think I mentioned this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I did not. Um, 75 cents a round, and that's before all the craziness um, for shooting ammo, okay? 
75 cents a round. So if you're going to go ahead and shoot 300 rounds a week, you're looking at $225 a week in ammo. Um, whereas you make that jump to 556, and this is why I started with 556 first. Um, well, and the fact that 556 barrel allows you to use the CMMG upper kit, you know, conversion kit for shooting 22 long rifle. Can't do that with 300 blackout barrels. Okay. So 90 bucks for 300 rounds or 12 bucks with 22 long rifle for 300 rounds. 225 bucks versus 90 bucks versus 12 bucks. Hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, most of us would probably do, I would assume, similar to what I've done with this. Um, and I think it's also good to have backup parts, things like that. So they had to deal with uh, the 300 blackout that I've got coming in. So it's actually a full parts kit because I like to build the rifles and stuff. But um, I've got several strip lowers and, uh, you know, that's uh, always something fun to do. So while I'm not planning on actually building building um, this into one right now, I was thinking I might just keep the parts around for, you know, backup parts. But since it also is a complete, you know, complete lower parts kit, I'm like, well, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. I probably will at some point. Maybe I'll make a little video on it. Um, I think that's about everything that I wanted to cover for tonight. I'm really tired, so... Sorry, all these late night videos, I'm tired. I'm off tomorrow, so I'm not going to be tired tomorrow when I do video. And um, yeah, so I hope that that helps. I, I guess the simple recap is go with a 5.56. Five, if I was to just tell you and you didn't want to think about it, I'd do a 10 and a half inch barrel, 5.56, five, 17 twist. And I'd make sure that my lower is a multi-lower. And then I would go ahead and purchase after that. Also, make sure you got plenty of mags. I recommend uh, Magpul, the, the, um, is it Magpul? Why am I thinking? I'm losing my mind. The P Mags. P Mags. I recommend P Mags. I guess I don't even know what I'm thinking. My brain's, I'm gone. P Mags, the Gen 2s, you can get them about $12 each. Um, I'd recommend having at least, uh, I think I think it's a good idea to have at least six plus one, so seven total. Um, and uh, then um, I have a lot more than that. But that being said, I would recommend that. Um, and obviously it depends on where you live because not everyone can have 30 round max. So um, that being said, I would, after that, if you can only have 10 round mags, you might want to get more of them. But um let's see oh yeah i'm doing a recap <laughs> told you i'm tired recap so that um going back to it 10 and a half inch five five six one seven twist multi lower and then go from there to getting um definitely get your mags too make sure you're getting ammo you want to have some ammo um i like the Aguila brand they're actually pretty good for cheap stuff to shoot um unless you're getting and then you know that's for five five six and two two three stuff um, and then, uh, from there, you're going to go ahead and go for a uh, good quality light, 600 lumens or higher that has the pressure pad, has the, um, uh, strobe feature on it. And then, um, a good holographic or red dot, um, don't be skimping out. I think the cheapest one that I've got, that I got on sale was like 140, 150 bucks. It's just, I do not skimp on, on life saving stuff. Um, and keep in mind, I'm running EOTech on mine. Um, and I think I've got a Vortex on the other one. Um, the SIGs are all right. Um, Hollow Sun's supposed to be pretty good. I haven't used that myself yet, but I've been looking at some of their stuff. Um, heard some good things about them. Um, but yeah, I would, uh, definitely not skimp on that. And then, uh, Let's see. After that, I, I would also recommend a uh, angled foregrip. I really like those, or something that's good for an AR pistol. Remember, we're talking AR pistol, meaning it has a pistol brace. Do not make the mistake of grabbing a rifle stock and putting it on something shorter than sixteen inches, because you will get in a lot of trouble if um, you don't have your tax stamps and stuff like that, and you get caught. Um, that's not something I would risk. Um, and then, uh, after you've done all that, you're going to go ahead and get a CMMG conversion kit for 22 long rifle. Usually you can get the Bravo or something like that. And it'll come with like three mags. They're crappy mags. I don't like them. So I also get, um, the, uh, better mag, ready mag, better mag adapter for, I think that's like 30 or 40 bucks. And you can go ahead and use M&P 1522 mags with, 
with it. Um, and those mags are great. I've you can usually get those on sale some places for like 16 bucks each. They're 25 round mags. I've got a dozen. Um, well, I've got three with the Bravo and then I got nine of the others. So I got a dozen 25 round mags so I can load them while I'm watching movies, something like here, and, you know, like watching Lucas, uh, T-Rex arms, some of his team, you know, stuff like that, whatever it is, I'm watching that and I can just load mags, um, before I go to the range so that they're ready to roll or technically I load them when I get home from the range so that they're always ready to roll whenever I feel like it. Um, and then, uh, after doing that, um, you're going to go ahead and do the uh, 300 blackout um, would be the next step. And and once again, I would recommend a max length of 10 and a half inches. And if you're looking for an ideal length, I think uh, 9 inches because once again, that's what it was made for. It's made to get full powder burn. Everything maximum effectiveness is around like 9, 9 and a half inches. So, I mean, if you want to go ultimate, go with that, you know. Get a 9 and a half inch barrel or, or 8 and a half somewhere in there. It's really close to that 9 mark and... You're going to get a really, really good performing uh, weapon. Um, but close range, once again, six and a half inch barrels, just fine. So if you want to go super short, go for it. Um, with 300 blackout, nothing under 10 and a half or 5.56. Five, um, you need that muscle velocity for 5.56 five, rounds to work right. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's everything. And oh, and then once again, the 300 blackout, if you've already got that multi lower, you just get a 300 blackout upper. You don't have to, you can just get a complete upper. You don't have to get. Any special mags, the mags run the same. So the once again, I like the P mags, the uh, Gen 2s, and they uh, work with 300 blackout as well as 5.56, even though one caveat to this, I would highly recommend you use something, duct tape, colored duct tape, something, um, paint them, something so that you can identify which mags are 300 blackout and which mags are 5.56 or 223 because your once again your 556 five, barrel can shoot 556 five, and 223 223 two, barrel can only shoot 223 two, cannot shoot 556 five, and a 300 blackout barrel can only shoot 300 blackout it cannot shoot the others you don't want to accidentally pop something in and then find out and this is why i say get a 556 five, barrel and not a 223 two, because now you can have you don't have to worry about the 556 five, and 223 two, stuff not to mention sometimes i find 223 two, ammo and i get that instead of 556 five, if it's on sale, got a good deal. I don't care. I got some American Eagles that were two or two three and really good deal. And I was like, eh, I'll get that. They're out of the other stuff um, because I've got five five six on all of my rifles. Um, I'm not doing two two three. Um, and uh, then the other thing was uh, with that is uh, just you really don't want to have you know a three hundred blackout try to go off in a freaking five five six. You know you also don't want a two two three to be shot with you know like for you to use a five five six round and two two three so label um i don't worry about my two two three and five six stuff because i don't own a two two three barrel but um as far as 300 blackout i am going to either have separate color mags um everything i've got so far are black mags i've got a whole bunch of of the p mags the gen twos but i was thinking about picking up some like maybe an fd um fde or whatever it is you know like get something different color um and just dedicate those to uh, the uh, 300 blackout or I can go ahead and um, do something to go ahead and make sure that I know exactly what I've got in that gun so I'm not accidentally screwing it up um, or you know if I'm together with friends shooting and something my brother or whatever and someone who's not usually using my stuff I don't want them to accidentally mess it up either because um, I don't want anyone getting hurt you know safety's number one priority okay I am going to roll I hope everyone has a great one sorry this is such a long video but Sometimes that's what you get, and especially on such a important topic. Love everyone. Be safe. Um, be prepared. Make sure that you're putting the time in at the range because the last thing you want is to get a gun and then let it sit there and think that it will protect you. You are the one who uses it. It's literally a tool. It cannot do anything without you. It needs you. Much more, <clears throat> much more important than you could ever imagine to train. So have a good one. Talk to you later.